Hi, my name's Ian Guest. I'm the head gardener here at the Waterways and Boating Lakes site. Today we're going to learn a bit about the heritage of this fantastic boating lake area. Today we're looking specifically at the boating lake, uh, the home of the Island Cafe run by the Access Community Trust. The boating lake was um, opened in 1926, a couple of years before the Venetian waterways to the south of us now. The boating lake was designed by the borough engineer at the time, Mr S.P. Thompson. The project began as an attempt really to boost um, post-war employment and was part of the National Relief Scheme. Not only did it help to boost employment in the area, it also brought much needed excitement to this part of Yarmouth. Boating Lake itself is approximately 100 metres long by about 50 metres wide, only about a metre deep. Um, and of course the island in the middle with the cafe uh, linked to the pathway by a concrete bridge. Uh, it only took less than a year to actually construct this entire site here and uh, through many hours of manual labour. The focal point of the site is obviously the island with the cafe on, linked as I said by the concrete bridges which are original and were actually constructed during the 1920s um, and renovated during the lottery funding for the site back in 2019. Over the years the popularity of the boating lake declined um, due to uh, people having other interests and unfortunately uh, a disappointing lack of maintenance during the latter 20th century. This decline ultimately led to the drainage of the lake completely back in 2014 um, but during the restoration it was refilled and now contains approximately 3,600 cubic metres of water. The garden areas surrounding the lake are in fact um, separated into separate sections depicting the type of plants that you would see in a particular continent. We're now in the Asian section of the garden, mainly these plants depict um, areas of Japan. We've got the Japanese anemone and this dwarf mountain pine, hebes, and generally plants that you will find in certain areas of Japan. And now in the European section of the gardens, um, mainly in this area there are what you will find in an English or Mediterranean garden. Many of them are actually edible or can be used as herbs in cooking, such as thyme, it also has a lovely smell, as does rosemary, which you could put on your roast spuds or your lamb when you're cooking a roast dinner. Right, this is the American section of the garden, um, showing examples that you might find in the American prairies. The American prairies are mostly associated with the Midwest and the word itself translates to grassland. This theme is reflected in this part of the garden um, with its mix of grasses and perennials. This is the Australasia section showing examples of plants you might see in Australia and New Zealand where in some parts the climate is very similar to ours um, but can produce much much larger plants such as these grasses and the yuccas at the back. This is the uh, African section which is really just a reflection of the African savanna. So this is mainly made up um, of dispersed trees, small trees growing, um, but plenty of space on the grounds that allows grasses to develop and grow. There is still much more to explore here at the waterways. The ornamental gardens, the plant life, uh, the fantastic cafe, and of course, these lovely boats and pedalos. Right, I'm off to carry on with my gardening duties, but uh, hope to see you soon. Goodbye.